What's going on, guys? We are in Shanghai, China right now for another episode of Fun Bros on the Street. We are at the very first sneaker con to ever come to mainland China, and we are here to ask people, experts, international people, tourists, whoever, why do Chinese people love sneakers and streetwear so much? Let's find out. Do you think that Chinese people are the biggest hype beasts and sneaker heads in the world? Yeah, of course. We got like muscle monies. Whatever is in the trend, we got money to buy it. What I've seen today, 100%, genuinely. This is the biggest sneaker event I've ever been to, first of all. And the fact is everyone's so passionate here about like what they're doing, you know, it's, it's crazy. I think it's just like because of the money. Hey, now we can afford everything, so let's do it. Oh yeah. Oh. Let me tell you something, they definitely got the population. The dollar sign demands respect. And they got a lot of those. <laughs> you know in the States, Yeezys are seen as like overlooked and everything. Here, anything is overlooked. Like it does not matter. A Supreme box logo, $5,000 on your body. It, it's, it's, it's another sweatshirt. I think the market is huge and uh, the people is crazy. Quantity wise, yes. What are some of the most popular sneakers that they're buying in China? Jordan 1 Red Shows, Adidas Yeezys. We sold over 10,000 pairs like Yeezys. Do you have any theories on how Chinese people got so much into streetwear? I think it's like with the Russians. When they were like a communist party, they were like, okay, everybody dressed the same. And now they go crazy with Versace and stuff. They have to show that they can. I think it's a lot more on with the hip hop culture recently, especially the rap China and music shows with uh, Chris Wu and all these influencers. The real thing that messed it up was the whole uh, Louis Vuitton Supreme, man. Yeah. A few years ago, it wasn't like this. Yeah. That, that broke the their, market. That was their gateway. They was, just, <laughs> they was on designer first. They was on Supreme designer. Supreme and Louis Vuitton dropped, and then they were like, ooh, now let's get into the streetwear. Social media and K-pop. 2012, Jordans were just sitting. Week later, you saw, it was like in a music video. Came back, and they're sold out. You see like ASAP with the track pants. Everyone wants to wear the track pants. It's like, I want to buy it to like, fit into a certain crowd. Right. What's the difference between a Chinese sneakerhead and an American sneakerhead? US sne uh, sneakerhead is just like, they know the culture. I mean, for Chinese sneakerheads, like, say more about like what's hot in the market right now. They are people that don't know anything, just follow the trend. But I'm, as a Jordan fan, I think we appreciate the stories behind. They're buying it now, but there's a large uh, population that really just wants to learn about dunks, wants to learn about SBs, wants to learn about like uh, signatures. People aren't afraid to experiment here, which is amazing, which is something we don't really have in the US that much. Like outside of big cities, people just kind of wear whatever. Like honest, I'm not really, I'm wearing a Hanes t-shirt and some APC jeans, that's it. The Chinese way that they really mix every hype brand together. They don't wear basic. They never go to Zara or H&M and buy a basic shirt. No way. Even the undershirt got a brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Dolce Gabbana underwear. The Chinese are not basic with the hype beast style. Now, give me your rating on the Dragon Ball Flight Positive 1. I mean, just based off Dragon Ball, it has to be 5 out of 5. Shut up, man. Five? A 5, yeah. Your favorite shoe that you want to buy. The Pornhub AF1. Right, because they endorsed me, I gotta say the five out of five as well. MCM Travis Scott one. I'm gonna say a one out of five because I think Travis Scott ones are so great on their own that you do not want to touch them. Naruto foam one. All right, because Naruto is the second greatest anime of all time following Dragon Ball, uh, it has to go four out of five because you know the, the work is not done that great, but I like the concept, so four out of five. One Piece. Foam one. Based off this design, I'm not really feeling how it looks. I'm gonna have to give these a three out of five. Timberland Air Jordan one. Oh man, if I was in New York right now, you see me with these joints. Five, Yo! five out of five. These are clean. I like Yo, them. I, this collaboration was the was the best done. Yeah, I actually think. Like, the Louis Yeezys. I gotta give these a zero out of five. Cause just looking straight at it, it just looks mad fake. You know? Oh man, the bugs. The Looney Two Ones. If they put Lola on here, these would have been a winner right here, man. Shout out to Bro Shoes, though. I love the customization. I think sometimes people are like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. I mean, why not? Hey, man. You just got to be creative. Everything is a work of art. So whatever you do, as long as you put in your passion into it, it's great. Or what's changing about the whole Made in China term? Listen, with the Higher Brothers oh, Made right. in China song, that's going to help. And I just seen this uh, article about people basically taking ownership of that Made in China stereotype and everything, putting it on shirts in a dope way. People know quality comes out of here, too. As long as Nike's still making their stuff here yeah. in China, they're going to be all right. There's this uh, Chinese designer, Feng Shang Wang. Her whole collection, it just says made in China. Taking that negative connotation, being like, hey, look, it's made. 
and like you're still gonna rock it. It's good quality. Yeah. Coming from America, we only hear about the American customization companies, but this one's really big called Banu. Let's check it out, guys. This is like a traditional Chinese Monkey King print. It's like they put plastic on top of it. All right, so they souped up backpacks too, for Air Jordan 1s. Okay, these look like the, um, the fragments, but man, the quality here is crazy. Like everybody can get everything nowadays and everybody has everything. So when you see something like this, that's kind of takes on this off-white and inspiration on this Air Jordan 1, it's crazy because it's like you've never seen this before. And it's not like these people just painted the sole or something. They literally are rebuilding and restitching the upper. And I'm sure these customizations cost a lot. Yo, these shoes, what the f These are the actual Banu shoes. I've seen Chinese guys carve pagodas out of carrots. You don't think that they could do a nice job on Air Force Ones? Okay, something else that I noticed here is that there's a lot of American brands that are well established in America that are trying to rebrand themselves completely here in China. For example, we're here at the Cat Booth. This is the construction company. Construction worker is not like a fashionable brand in America. Although it's funny because everybody always wore construction boots. So I think this is where Cat's going with it. They coming up with like flying it, construction boots. I don't even know if you could wear these to work because they ain't got the steel toe. I've never seen, that is hilarious actually. Some construction. Y'all want some construction boots? You want some construction boots? I got you, camo, yellow. American brands are coming to China to rebrand like Cat over there. Yeah, yeah. That construction brand is like trying to be cool. Yeah. What do you think about that? A good example is like how Carhartt does work in progress. And it's like, hey, let's let's cater to a more lifestyle oriented where we can show our strengths. So it's like footwear, it's durable. Um, you can wear it outdoors, but at the same time, let's give it to another audience. The positioning is very different because the history and, and the kind of culture that in US, sometimes it, it didn't transfer over to China. Uh, like a fresh start. Yes, it was a fresh start. What do you think about the reputation in China for like fakes? Nowadays, the reselling prices are really high. Some of the people, we don't have that much money to buy it, but we love the styles. But like in, in China, we got factories to produce those fake ones. You got the same styles. Right. Uh, fakes in China, it could look almost exactly the same. That is correct, yeah. Americans, like foreigners, they also buy fakes. So you can't say we must stop it. You can't stop it. Seen from the outside, uh, it's really, really bad. We have crazy stuff. We have Supreme Yeezys. We have uh, off-white Balenciagas. So they mix everything together. But we have to understand that these things are not meant to make for Western people. When is it okay to wear fakes? So many real sneakers. They're only looking for real stuff. If I'm a regular customer, of course I can afford a 175. But the market is over thousand right now. Of course, like. For regular people, they can't even afford the sandals shoes. Yeah. What do you think about like that fake Supreme store, the Italia? It's so embarrassing. And now we're here with our friend Jay, aka Shanghai Soul. How is the Chinese sneaker market different than the states? I would say like there's probably like five big things that are totally different. Number one, I would say that the resale market right now. Right now, we're talking about resellers in the states a lot. People are saying, "Oh man, the resellers got all the product." Um, in China, it's it's like that times ten. Because before, uh, resellers in China were really trying to buy uh, expensive goods like bags and, and clothes, Louis, Gucci, and all that kind of stuff. And that's where they saw profits. But now, uh, they're starting to understand that sneakers are, are high in va value, right? So before, for someone like me, I would be able to maybe go up in competition with you guys when we're going to a sneaker raffle. Maybe a thousand people would try to enter a raffle. But now, that number is probably like 6,000, 7,000 because all the resellers are in it too and they're trying to make a buck off of sneakers because it's such a profitable market. And that was gonna lead me to point two, which is that um, a lot of the people in the lineups nowadays is like the resellers are just paying people to go line up. They're paying people to camp out. Manual labor out here is so cheap. Like they, they'd be literally be picking homeless people off the street and giving them 300 kwai, which is like 45 bucks, to go camp out outside Nike Lab for seven hours. And another point was uh, how we buy sneakers out here. Like I know in the States right now, people are using StockX and GOAT the most probably. Um, and out here we got something really similar, it's called Poison, uh, Du in Chinese. You can buy straight off their website, just like StockX. Um, the, the, the seller ships it to Du for uh, Poison to get authenticated and then you get the shoe within a week and a half, two weeks, something like that. It's, exact, it's the exact same thing. But they also do authentication separately on its own as a separate thing. So if you were to sell me a pair of shoes on, a, on another app, on another platform, and I wanna make sure that they're legit, I can take pictures, everything, box, uh, toe, 
uh, shoelaces, tongue, soles. You gotta take everything out. You gotta show the stitching. You gotta show, if you got a receipt, show that too. Um, and then I send those pictures to a third party to get it verified. And then they'll say, yeah, you know what? These are legit. You can pay that dude now. And so that's something totally different from what StockX does because it doesn't have to be sold on their platform. But they get paid for doing the authentication process as a separate entity. I definitely think it speaks to the adoption that China has had about like mobile apps, such as, you know, you can pay all your bills and do everything through WeChat. Just like you can authenticate your shoes probably essentially through WeChat now. You know, the fourth point I was gonna talk about is the celebrity culture out here. It's not the, quite the same as what, you know, whatever Justin Bieber's wearing or whatever Kanye's wearing. Um, you know, there's some celebrities out here in Asia where people literally wanna copy the entire fit from head to toe. Um, you know, a good example is a celebrity in Hong Kong, Sean Yu, Edison Chen. You know, whenever they post a fit on Instagram, it's not their own brand necessarily. It could just be, you know, like a North Face jacket with some New Balances. And literally the next day, that look is mimicked and copied everywhere. There's a lot of people out here that have money, but they don't really know how to put a, put a, an outfit together, right? And so when they see um, an Edison rock a fit and they're like, man, like that, I like that look. So you know what? I'm just gonna copy that exact look because he's putting it together for me, right? You may not have the fashion sense to like throw on this jacket with with you know the the quarter inch pants and whatever. But then they see someone famous rocking, and they're like, oh, I could do that. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna try to copy that exact fit. It's like just copying whatever clothes is on the mannequin. The last point I wanted to make was that the fake culture. You know, everyone in the states. Um, you know, when they see something made in China, that or they always raise an eyebrow like, yeah. is this legit? What's going on? You know, even when I post on my IG, when I tag Shanghai China, I mean, that's the location I'm in. But the second I post a photo, people are like, yo, those are fake, fugazi, I don't believe it, whatever. Those probably cost 30 cents, whatever. Um, and, you know, that in some, in some ways, that is a reality, right? But I feel like for the kids and then for a lot of the people coming up in the sneaker game out here, um, fakes is, their, is the only way that they can try to be like someone from the States. Right. You know what I mean? And so when I, when I hear those comments or when I see people like wearing fakes, like I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing. Like it, it kind of brings, it kind of devalues the, the sneaker game a little bit. But it, for those people, that's the only way that they can try to like feel like they're a part of something. You know, they may not have a thousand dollars for a pair of Travis Scott's. They may not have two thousand four thousand dollars for a pair of Mars Yards, but if they can get it for 150 and they can feel some kind of way, then they're gonna do it. I gotta be honest, in the States, definitely uh, wearing fakes is a huge no. Yep. But I know that the Chinese market is different. Obviously, a lot of fakes are even made in China. Um, but I, I definitely think, and I, it took me a while to kind of, to understand that, because at first I was like, I would never wear fakes. Right. And I still probably would not, but I think for the sake of spreading the culture, you need to make it accessible. Like some places, the fakes are getting so good. What's to say that this isn't the exact same thing as the real pair? I mean, they got Yeezys out here. They got Ultra Boost out here with the straight up same boost from Bass F, the same German company that makes the boost for Adidas. There's definitely real material in some of those fakes. Oh, for sure. I mean, and like, you know, just because Factory A sells to Nike, you know, they may still get the mold to Jordan 1's to Factory B and Factory B just releases them out to the public. Like who's to say that that's a different shoe just because it doesn't have the Nike stamp of approval on it. It's, I mean, it's, it's crazy, man. It's really crazy. Sometimes I think it's sending a message to the people who are actually spending all that money. It's sending a message to all those rich people out there being like, hey man, look at that Paul Paul over there. She rocking, she rocking Jordans too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, there's so many times where I'm walking down the street and there's literally a guy pushing a mountain of styrofoam, mountain of plastic, easy 350s, man. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. Like, he, he looking kind of hot. Hey, 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 Kanye did say he wanted everybody in the world to have a pair of Yeezys. And guess what? It might happen in China. Yep. There's gonna be a decent number of people who understand the, the Chinese market that are gonna watch this, but also a lot of people who don't and are gonna write off the Chinese sneaker economy, just like, oh, they're messing the thing, messing the game up. But what can help them start to understand what's going on out here? What people don't understand is that people out in China got money, man. Like, it's not just, you know, rickshaws and, and, and people picking tea leaves and, and fakes. You know what I mean? Like, people be moving mad product out here. And 
people need to understand that the sneaker industry is starting to realize that. I mean, you look at how many Chinese New Year themed shoes are coming out every year. Adidas does it, Puma does it, Nike does it. Like everyone's coming out with Chinese theme because the companies in the States, they're actually trying really hard to get in here. They're trying to, they're trying to tap into what China has to offer in terms of creativity and, um, and obviously money. All right, cool, man. Yo, Jay, thank you for the insight. Appreciate it. Back to sneaker con. What do you think it'll take for China to develop domestic brands? I think we need more uh, situation like this that the people coming from abroad showing the business can be run in a different way, not in the old way that they just take other stuff and do as as much as possible. Other Chinese designers, you know, that obviously studied abroad, they don't stay abroad now. They're bringing it back home. So I, I really respect that. I like that for the Chinese people. The Chinese trying to make their own cutting, their own own design to fit into the streetwear culture. I think that's the changes. Yeah. Believe in your own people. You gotta like your own people. Are there any Chinese shoe brands that are coming up that can also, you know, are making their name on the global stage? Feng Shuang Wang for sure, and Sun Quan's. Leaning. Myself, I, I started to look into uh, leaning more. Leaning is the number one Chinese brand. Leaning. They're which doing one? good. Which one? The way. I like the, the CJ McCollum shoe. Dude, that CJ McCollum shoe is hot. I'm gonna go with leaning. I think mean, leaning has always been like the older and bigger brand. I mean, they signed D Wade. That's like one of the craziest, you know, signees of uh, all time, especially in the Chinese industry. It has been fascinating to be here. There are so many Chinese domestic brands that are doing cool stuff, whether it's collaborating um, with the Western brands or doing their own version of customization or just having their own product like Entron, which is obviously a direct competitor to an end crepe. I just think it's cool to see domestic Chinese products. And shout out to those other brands, but it's not just a Jason Mark booth or a Crepe Protect booth in China. These are domestic Chinese products. Yo, it's so crazy. Actually, we're recognizing a ton of people from LA that we've seen at this event. So I guess it speaks volumes of, on how international it is. Um, you know, you obviously you look at all the different partners that they have here. SneakerCon Shanghai, man. My favorite shoe out right now, the Shanghai 97, no bias. I just love this color. Looks like a Pokemon. Looks like a lapis come to life.